We were at Granny Mary and Papa Jason's house at the seashore. It was the perfect place. It was right near the beach. There was lots of room and even places to go shopping if we needed anything. We also had neighbors who had kids, and that was always a good thing. In the morning, we packed up our chairs, food, drinks, my little surfboard, and headed out to the beach. Mom now packed an extra bag for my sister Ernestra. That included diapers, swim pants, bottles, and heaven knows what else she might need. She was a very needy little girl at that time. She might have had 10 different tubes of million strength sunblock in there too, for all I knew. I got to carry the baby bag. Great. How was I going to carry that and my surfboard? Why did we need all this stuff anyway? Once we finally hit the sand, I was having a great time. The waves were perfect for me to surf on. Not too big, because even though I was a good swimmer, I was still only a little kid. I built a sand castle, which my sister promptly walked through. I made a new friend, Julie. Julie was staying in a house near ours. Julie had the biggest blue, green eyes I had ever seen. They reminded me of my cat's eyes. She hopped over on her hippity hop ball to introduce herself. Julie had noticed me surfing and wanted to learn how. Julie didn't have a surfboard, which was fine. I was happy to teach her on mine. I liked her because she reminded me of my friend Alex. Julie took to surfing pretty quickly. When the waves died down, Julie told me that she had another hippity hop. We bounced around on the sand, enjoying the noise that the bouncy balls made as they hit the ground. She even let me take the ball home, and we agreed to meet the next day. The next morning, I was excited to have a more mature person to play with instead of my toddler sister. I gathered my stuff and hopped on the hippity hop ball and bounced all the way to the beach. There were no waves that day, so Julie and I made a sand city. We used shells to build the wall and seaweed and driftwood scraps to create gardens. It was a work of art. Then Ernesto toddled over and stepped in it. That was all right. I was used to this. We gave her a little shovel and pail and let her help us build. Then all of a sudden, an odor emitted from her. Julie made that face people make when they smell something gross and are not sure where it comes from. I knew who made it. I looked over at Anestro. Her face was red. It was a bad one. And toddlers don't feel all that embarrassed when they poo their diapers. It's normal to them. She just kept on working with her pail and shovel. It really stank. I was embarrassed. Mom, Ernesto pooped her diaper. I hollered over at my mom. It stinks. Jason, you don't have to announce it to the world and embarrass your sister, Mom said. Where is her diaper bag? I don't know, but she really stinks. I said, doubting that Ernesto felt embarrassed about something that she did at least a million times a day. I can't find the diaper bag, Mom said. Where did you put it? I didn't put it anywhere, I said. In my excitement to play with Julie, I had forgotten to carry the bag down to the beach. Oops. Well, now Mom could change Ernesto at home instead of the changing station in the public bathroom. Our grandparents' house was only like a block away. Jason, it's your responsibility to bring the diaper bag, Mom said. Why? I don't wear diapers. She's the one who makes the diapers dirty. She should carry her own bag. It was a silly response, but I was embarrassed in front of my new friend, and Ernesto was ruining my day, and she really smelled horrible. Ernesto, you suck, I said. The comment just sort of popped out. Ernesto looked embarrassed for the first time I had ever seen. My mom got the look on her face. You know that look. That look that tells us when our parents are really not happy with us. Uh-oh. Oops. Very calmly, my mom said, Jason, pick up your things. Then she started to pick up the other stuff. Now, she said, still giving me the look. Mom walked over and picked up Ernesto. Honey, will you please grab the chairs? She politely asked my dad, who was watching the scene play out. Daddy collected the chairs and took the bags from Mom, who was holding Ernesto. Daddy also collected my things, which I was refusing to pick up. I had no intention of leaving. Then, without saying another word, he picked me up. Then we all went back to the house. Mom went upstairs and changed smelly Ernesto. I was put in the timeout chair. 
When Mom came downstairs, she was carrying Ernesto's diaper bag and a folded chair. Then she walked over to me and said, Apologize to your sister. What? No way. She was the one who started this by going poo and stinking up the entire beach. For what? She was the one who caused the problem, I insisted. Why should I apologize for what my sister did? You were mean to your sister, Mom clarified. You hurt her feelings. She ruined my day. And besides, she doesn't even know what I said. She can barely talk anyway. She could tell that you were angry with her, Mom said, for something that she can't control yet. And we do not tell anyone you suck. I won't do it. I crossed my arms for emphasis. I had no intention of apologizing when I was the one who was being punished. Nope, not happening. Fine, Mom said. She kissed Dad on the cheek and carried Ernesto out the door and off to the beach. Daddy smiled and set the timer. Where are they going? I asked. Daddy stopped the timer. You are in time out, Dad said. We will chat in a minute. It's quiet time now. Then he started the timer again. I knew what this meant. I had been in time out before. I knew how to sit quietly and do nothing. It was the worst thing to do to a kid who liked to be outside at the beach. For the next few minutes, I sat quietly. Dad took out a book and silently read to himself. Finally, after what felt like a thousand years, the buzzer went off. Daddy walked over and said, So, are you ready to apologize to Ernesto? I don't think so, I said. Okay, that's fine, Dad said smiling. So what? That was it? I always knew that time out was nothing. I went over and started to get my stuff to go back to the beach. Nope, Dad said. We are not going back to the beach. You can read or whatever in here, but we can't go back to the beach. I bet Mommy and Ernesto are having fun. But Dad, I said. No, it's fine, Daddy said. I understand that you are mad at your sister. She smelled really bad, but you can't be mean to her and you were the one who forgot her diaper bag. That was your job, and it's all right to make a mistake like forgetting the bag. But that doesn't give you the right to be mean to your sister or to be snarky to mommy or me. And when we hurt someone's feelings, we apologize. I didn't know what to say to that. I understand, Daddy said. Nobody is perfect. Sometimes we say things that we don't mean, and when we do that, we are sorry. And so we say we are sorry. Put yourself in Ernesto's shoes. You used to wear diapers. Imagine how she must have felt, first making that smell and then being told by her hero that she sucks. I just want you to think about that while they are at the beach today. And then he went back to reading his book. I sat and fumed for a bit. I tried to read a book. I decided to play a video game. I tried to watch TV. It was all boring. I kept looking out the window and seeing the beautiful day outside. I could hear the waves crashing on the shore. I didn't want to look at comics or read or watch TV. I wanted to be on the beach playing in the water and building sandcastles with my new friend. I sat and sulked. Daddy kept reading his book. He didn't seem to care that we were stuck inside while Mommy and Ernesto played in the sand on a perfect day. Smelly, poopy Ernesto. She did suck. Then I thought about what Dad said. Who was my hero? Probably my dad. How would I feel if Dad told me that I sucked? It would hurt my feelings. But my dad would never say that. He would never tell me that I sucked. Okay, I was a jerk today. I was mean to my little sister. I hurt her feelings. I sucked today. I felt guilty. My dad didn't tell me that I sucked when I was mean to my sister. Later when Mommy and Ernesto came back in from the beach, I went over to Ernesto and gave her a big hug and apologized for being mean to her. And I did really mean it. I had had a lot of time to think about what I had done and why I had to go inside. Taking the time to think about what I did helped me to understand the effect that I had on my sister. I understood that I had hurt her feelings I also understood how it would feel if someone did that to me. 
It was a lesson and an important one. I learned to think of how my actions would affect others before I acted. The advice to think before you act is good indeed. So is the advice about consequences of actions. Our actions do have consequences, not just to us ourselves, but others. When we think before we act, we avoid saying or doing something that might hurt others. I learned that lesson when I was very young and have tried to follow it throughout my life. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you like the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.